executed a few months after they returned. So what has that to do with the Chateau of Blois? Well, it's inconceivable that during her time there, Anne did not learn some of its history. It's almost as inconceivable that she and her family did not know the history of the chateau before she even arrived there. And perhaps she even went to the chateau of Blois because of its history. The first record of a building on the site was a castle built by the Counts of Blois in the 800s. Over the following centuries it was developed by successive Counts, one of which was Stephen, that same Stephen of the Anarchy. Stephen was much inspired to claim the Kingdom of England by his wife Maud. Maud was the Countess of Boulogne, daughter of Count Eustace of Boulogne. Eustace played a very significant part in the conquest of 1066. As a consequence, as a reward, he became one of the wealthiest landowners in England, with holdings all over the kingdom, including Kent and even more extensively in Norfolk and Suffolk. A glance at the online National Archives records shows dozens and dozens, indeed hundreds and hundreds of land records in the name of Eustace Boulogne, all over England. He also maintained holdings in France. So this guy was a big shot by any standard and his daughter inherited his ambition. Now, in November 1120, William Ayling, Henry I's only legitimate son, drowned in the so-called White Ship Disaster. His premature death created a succession crisis and the descendants of William the Conqueror split into two bitterly opposing sides, and a 19-year-long civil war ensued. After the death of his son, the grieving king chose Matilda, granddaughter of William the Conqueror, in preference to his nephew, Stephen of Blois, grandson of the conqueror to inherit the throne. To secure his preference, he had his barons swear an allegiance to Matilda when she became queen, and at the same time swear allegiance to any heirs that she might have. But when Henry died in 1134, many of the barons ripped up the oath, claiming they had been coerced, and so sided with Stephen and his claim to the Kingdom of England. The war, the anarchy as it became known, 19 years when Christ and his saints slept, was a brutal conflict. Matilda and her half-brother Robert of Gloucester led one side, and Stephen of Blois, his Queen Countess of Boulogne, and their son, another Eustace de Boulogne, led the other side. It split 
England in half, west-east, and for the most part commanded from Bristol and Gloucester in the west, and in the east command flowed from London and the ebbing fortunes of the cities of Winchester and Lincoln. But after 19 years of death and destruction, who would, who could, eventually unite the Kingdom of England? Would it be Matilda's son, Henry Plantagenet, or Maud and Stephen's son, Eustace de Boulogne? Eventually, Matilda, with her half-brother, Robert, emerged victors. But it had been so close, oh so close, the conflict over three decades could have gone either way. If Matilda had lost, England would have a very different history. The Plantagenet dynasty would never have existed, and Eustace would have been the first king of the de Boulogne dynasty. Victory, however, did not unite the kingdom, but served only to deepen a pre-existing east-west split. Wales, over the preceding centuries, had become the home of the descendants of the first Britons of the Isles. Wales had never been conquered by the Anglo-Saxons. It had never been conquered by Roman Catholicism. It was never conquered by the Normans, that is to say, the people never became English, never became Roman Catholic, and had no wish to become Anglo-Norman. An inherent defiance of external authority. They were anti-English, anti-Roman Catholic, anti-clerical, anti-papal, and anti-French. Over the years, the deeply hostile attitude towards the Roman Catholic Church in particular percolated, it permeated into the western counties of England. A case in point would be three of Thomas Becket's four assassins during the reign of the incoming Henry II. It's worthy of note that William de Tracy's family held Sudley Castle at Winchcombe a fact that the organiser of the royal tour would have been more than aware of. Once in the western region, the area of the anarchy, Sudley was the first place the great entourage visited. It's worthy of note that in the 1540s it became the home of Jane Seymour's brother, Thomas Seymour, and his new bride, the king's widow, Catherine Parr. They were both staunch Protestants. Catherine died and is buried there. The polarisation prevailed at the time of the Reformation, the time when England broke from Rome in the 1500s. The route of the 1535 Royal Progress was a strategic political move by the Cromwell Seymour faction to oust the Francophile High Church apologist Anne de Boulogne and her faction from the governance of the King and the government of his kingdom. And it is overlaid here on this map.
Thank mm-hmm. you.